and uh, you go to the place, they say, listen, we don't need tents. We need food. They say, no, no, we are into tents, and so on. So uh, I'm just basically uh, saying that uh, it's important for the uh, donor community themselves under these circumstances to, to coordinate their efforts and to, again, listen more to what the people are saying. Then the other thing I found was very difficult procurement uh, processes, which meant that sometimes what you needed came before, it came after the disaster. People who were insisting to bring things in from the Middle East because they said they had things already stored, etc. I'm sure uh, these things are, are well known to many people here. But in terms of managing the negative impact of climate change, if we expect that uh, things might be getting worse before they get better, these are very, very serious issues uh, which would have to be uh, looked at. Of course, uh, there's been a lot of talk about disaster management, and I'm impressed with the Bangladesh example that they've actually strengthened the institutions to be able to cope. This was something new for us, but I, I can say that it was brought home very strongly to us that in terms of disaster preparedness, the nation was not prepared, and we've taken steps, therefore, to put in the uh, necessary measures. I will be uh, finishing, um, but I, I will say in terms of uh, migration, you know, um, the impact on especially young girls was disastrous because uh, they migrated to the cities as livelihoods were destroyed. And um, they, they have been put at great risk um, in this regard. Um, they've been taken advantage of, they've made babies even when they were babies themselves, etc. And um, I hope some of the discussion will touch on issues which will enable us to um, maybe uh, expand on these, how to really mainstream disaster management. So it's not treated as a, a separate topic that is incorporated in general development strategies uh, because this is what uh, it is really. When you have a disaster, schools are destroyed, it's education. Health is affected, uh, uh, it's health. I mean, hospitals, housing is housing. So that we, as we move forward, have a, a more integrated uh, approach in terms of uh, the development uh, agenda. Sorry, I went. Mary, thank you so much. Thank you. Many questions there that Mary's already flagged up. She'd like you to test her on as we move on, um, why is it that the international aid agencies, for instance, have these ludicrous rivalries? When are we ever gonna learn? Um, what do we do about managing migra sudden migration and, and when nobody's expecting it? We must have some lessons there. Um, certainly, Myanmar was not expecting anything like cy Cyclone Nargis when it hit. Um, until just a few days before it hit Myanmar, it was expected to make landfall elsewhere. So one must certainly bear that in mind when making any kind of assessment of how the military regime there coped. Nevertheless, if it hadn't been for the banging on the door by organizations like ASEAN, which finally managed to get the outside world to help two, three weeks after the cyclone hit in early May, the situation would have been altogether worse. I'm going to ask Surin, Pitsuan now from ASEAN, Secretary General of ASEAN, to give us his insights. Thank, thank you very much. Um, it is extremely heartening to, to see the, uh, the forum this year taking up the theme of the impact, human impact, of the climate change as a, a, the, the major theme. Uh, having experience firsthand with search on home, how to contain the human disasters from the natural hazards in the delta of the Irrawaddy River certainly uh, convinced me that we will have more and more of this kind of natural hazards having impact on human migration. 
Now, the International Organization of Migration has already uh, come up with a, a forecast that by the year 2050, there will be about 200 million people who could be described as climate migrants. And there are others who came up with even larger, more frightening number. But what really happened in the case of the delta of the Ayavadi? As you know, it used to be one of the rice bowls of Asia and therefore of the world. But through years of neglect, people in the delta have been living with vulnerability, with poverty, and when Cyclone Narkis came on the 2nd and 3rd of May last year, 140,000 people perished. 85 immediately, 50 more lost, unaccounted for until today. And about 20,000 wounded. And Sir John Holm and I had to work in order to save 2.4 million more. Now, Myanmar, I'm glad you call it Myanmar. <laughs> That's the, the word we use in ASEAN. Uh, already has three or four million people living outside, mostly in Southeast Asia, in search of better life. In Thailand alone is close to two million. We hope now that after the relief, relief effort period is over, we are going into the recovery that we can help people, particularly those 2.4 million, to have a better life, to have a healthy life, and to have a protected life. Otherwise, Southeast Asia will be flooded by human migration. Now, the problem that, that we face is not only to deliver, but also to have full access to all areas affected by Cyclone Narkis. As Sir John Holm referred to, for different reasons, for many reasons, the government and the regime were not quite ready to open up for international humanitarian workers. So we have to work not only to deliver the relief, but also to convince the government that the outside world is not totally hostile. For this issue of saving human lives, the outside world is willing to put the political issue aside, and we have to work against time. And we were able to show success and achievement in the first year of saving the 2.4 million. The challenge now is how to get the international community to help. The recovery period, which will have to be concentrating on the issues of housing, of education, of health, of agriculture, of sanitation, and for the next three years, the estimate is that the country, the Delta, will need 691 million U.S. dollars. Otherwise, these 2.4 million people will be internal migrants, internally displaced, because the living conditions there are not improving and are not conducive to better life. And the impact of migration adding on already millions outside will certainly have political and security repercussions on the entire region of Southeast Asia. Now, already Southeast Asia is most vulnerable for climate change. 